Fall is here and so are the salmon. Ross Davies with you on this mid-October afternoon from the Kanaka Creek at the 240th Street Fish Fence. The chamber have been making their way in from the Fraser, drawn in by some recent rains we've had with some spawning action just downstream of the fence itself. We'll take a look upstream east of here a kilometer or so, but first things first, we're going to talk about this fish fence here and kind of how it works, what it's all about, what the purpose is, and we're also going to look at this funny looking thing over here. That's a habitat structure that was put in courtesy of funding from Pacific Salmon Foundation and some help from Fisheries and Oceans Canada, Metro Vancouver, BCIT Woodlock, which is where some of the logs came from. That whole thing was to save that access road from eroding and provide some pretty good habitat along the way as well. But first things first, uh, here we have the fish fence here. Now you'll only see this October, November, December or thereabouts. It's just for the fall migration. Inbound salmon are coming from our right to our left and they run into this structure which goes all the way across the creek. So they're looking for a way to get up there towards the spawning grounds further up Kanaka Creek. They'll find a tunnel which is right below us and it leads into this box. Straight down there, let's see if you can see it, there's a pet door for salmon. They open that thing with their snouts, swim into the box, it closes behind them and then about 90% of these fish will be released unharmed to the creek with a very small number, maybe 5% taken to Bellarine Hatchery to use for eggs and milk to run the hatchery. So we much prefer most of the salmon to spawn alive. This is held up by a main cable, you can see it right there, spans across the whole creek and a series of smaller cables that run down to the fence itself which lead back to this winch box and we can raise or lower this fence in different configurations depending on what the creek's doing. When we get high water here and it can get as high as it did on March 11, 2007 to where those two folks up the hill are right now, believe it or not. So the creek can do some pretty amazing things. So purposes of this thing, number one, collect broodstock for bell living hatchery. Now people can come down here sometimes, see salmon 50 or 60 in this box and think, you know, that's not a very nice thing to do. But the alternative would be to have a dragged gill net right through spawning beds and we're not going to be party to that. So that's number one to get uh, brood stock for the hatchery. Number two, we can provide an estimate of how strong the return is and what the timing is because this thing will go underwater at least half a dozen times a year. There's a third reason too and I think it's really cool is people can come down here from their hometown Maple Ridge and see salmon right in their backyard. So it's a pretty popular venue for school groups. So we're doing our return of the salmon virtually this year because if you can't attend the actual event, which is registration only and it filled up like wildfire, you can just kind of watch this or you might want to attend the event and watch this as well. Of course these sandbars along the riverbank really do tell a story. Is it right down here? We got a raccoon track and right beside it some pretty good bear tracks. Now those are front tracks here and I'm pretty sure over here, let's just take a look, we can see the difference between the front track there and there's the rear track. See it's a lot longer and narrower than the front is. So these tracks are all kind of a different vintage so lots of bears have been coming and going. Of course if a bear were to show up right now, which is entirely possible, we would just simply walk up the hill, leave the area and let the bear have a turn. So we'll head upstream from the fish fence to a point about a kilometer east of here up to the main spawning grounds and we'll see what's cooking up there. It's a very fall like 11 degrees on this mid-October day on Kanaka Creek. Ross Davies with you in search of salmon as we take a look over at the entrance of Thornvale Creek, a very important tributary stream. Comes in right over there and we'll cover that in another video. So we ventured up Kanaka, east of the fish fence a ways, and just looking around here, I spotted a little action in the riffle up ahead of us. So we're going to take a little walk upstream there and kind of check it out. Of course, as we roll through the spawning season, you're going to see more and more of this. There's a couple of chum salmon carcasses up there. So come around uh, November, maybe sooner, it's going to stink up the joint something awful. But again, that is a feast for everything that lives here. If you see some cut in half, don't worry, that's not some kind of weird ritual. That's fisheries crews 
that come along the stream and count the uh, carcasses and they chop them in half to avoid double counting. Now another thing to look for is, have a look over here and there's this area of gravel right in front of us. It's really clean. Now that's uh, female chum that are coming in, either they're testing to see if the gravel's to their liking or they're spawning for real, but either way they'll actually clean out the creek and produce a lot of aquatic invertebrate production as well as getting rid of some accumulated silt. So chum are the best stream cleaners bar none. Just a little digging just happened right there. So she'll swim forward when she's ready to draw a portion of her eggs. The male will be right behind her. He'll come in and deposit his milt. There she goes again. And that milt will contact the eggs. The eggs will accept it. And this all has to happen underwater inside of a minute or else the outer layer, outer membrane of the eggs, what we call water hardened, seal up shut, and the milt won't be accepted. None of the eggs will be wasted. Another female down here digging away. There she goes. Good girl. As dippers, bears, seagulls, herons, everything under the sun will cash in on this huge nutrient blast that's come back into Kanaka Creek again this autumn. So we're on the spawning grounds of Kanaka Creek. There's a fair number of chum in this riffle area. We call it that it's because it's flat, it's wide, relatively swift water. And it's 10 to 20 centimeters deep. The gravel is just the right size for chum salmon. We've got a pair out there right now. There's a male and a female is just ahead of him. And she's been digging her nest, her red, every now and then. We'll keep an eye on her and see if she does it again. So the dominant males will pair off with the females. The females pick the site and they will defend it against other females. M meanwhile, the male will go after the female. So over the spawning period, about maybe 10 days to two weeks, these females may have three or four different reds and they spread out their uh, clutch as, you, as it were of maybe two to three to four thousand eggs and divide them equally among the reds or more or less and the males may spawn with as many as three or four different females. Ten or so days after that they will drift down river and give their lives back to the creek. 